Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Christmas is coming up and I wanted to give you a practical Christmas project to do. So I designed a Christmas tree ornament made out of paracord that you can use to decorate your Christmas tree with. The project is designed to use up only a few supplies, it is fairly inexpensive to do and it is also simple and fast once you get used to it. So with this said, let's take a look at these Christmas ornaments, then make our own. Here you can see a couple of examples of Christmas tree ornaments that you can make using this tutorial. All in all, they are not the largest ornaments out there, but still large enough to decorate a tree with. They are a bit over an inch in diameter. At the top, we can see a loop with which we attach our ornaments onto the Christmas tree. The body is made using a pineapple knot. At the bottom, we have a stopper knot which prevents the body from slipping off of the loop. You can make these ornaments in a variety of color combinations, whatever you would like. Let's move on to the tutorial. As far as supplies go, the first supply that you're going to need is going to be a wooden sphere. The wooden sphere, or a wooden ball, is going to serve as the core for our Christmas decorations. The specific one that we're going to use in this project is an inch in diameter and it has a hole drilled through it. You can find this style of wooden balls or spheres in a variety of different shops. Art related shops usually carry just this size. So you shouldn't have too much of an issue finding the course for your Christmas decorations. Online shops such as eBay or Amazon also carry them. The next supply that you're going to need is going to be Paracord 550. You're going to need two pieces, each about three and a half feet long. I have gutted each of the pieces in order to make the cords lay flatter. You should go for Christmassy colors such as red, green, white and so on. You're also going to need a smaller piece of paracord about two feet long, which is going to be used for the loop as well as the finishing knot for your Christmas decorations. To tie the knots onto, you're going to need some sort of a mandrel. A broomstick handle is usually ideal since it is about an inch in diameter. You can also use various PVC pipes, pill bottles or anything about an inch in diameter. As you can see, I have placed a rubber band onto my mandrel in order to make tying a bit easier. For the tools, a lacing needle is recommended and it's going to make the tying of your knots a lot easier. It's not mandatory, but highly recommended. You're also going to need something to cut the cords with. And finally, a lighter. With these supplies ready, let's begin tying the knots needed in order to make our Christmas decorations. We're going to start off tying by tying the main covering knot. The knot is a two-pass type 1 pineapple knot tied out of a 7-part 6-byte Turk's head. All in all, this is a fairly simple knot made by first tying a base knot using the red color in this case, so the one that's going to form the outside rings, and then we interweave it using the second color, which is going to make the zigzag pattern at the center. So we're first going to tie the base knot, then interweave it. Let's begin. You can see the basic setup here. I have a mandrel, in my case a PVC pipe, onto which I have placed a rubber band. The standing end, 
of my first piece of paracord is placed under it and I have attached a lacing needle onto the other end. I'm going to start off tying by taking my paracord. I'm going to wrap it around my mandrel, like this, come over the standing end, then come around again, coming over this strand and towards the right side. Now pick up your working end, so the one with the lacing needle attached, and travel under, over, towards the left side, like this. Come around again, and follow the standing end. So what we're going to do, is we're going to travel under, over, in order to double up the standing end. Like this. Now, from right to left, we're going to go the opposite of this strand. So we're going to travel over, under, and over. Like this. Come around again. And this time, we're going to travel in between the standing end and the strand that's doubling it up. So, in between these two strands, and we're going to do the opposite in order to split them. So, we travel over, under, over. Like this. Now, from right to left, we're going to go the opposite to this strand again. So, under. Over, under, and over. Like this. Then, we're going to continue by doubling up the standing end for a second time. So we travel under, over, under, over, like this. Then from right to left, we again go the opposite to this strand. So we travel over, under, over, under, and over. And again, we split the two parallel strands. We travel between them and do the opposite. So, over, under, over, under, and over. Like this. And again, traveling from right to left, we also split this pair by traveling between the two strands and doing the opposite. So, under, over, under, over, under, and finally over. Now place the working end of your paracord right next to the standing end, going under one. With this we have finished the base knot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my working hand under the rubber band just to get it out of the way. Like this. We can now begin our interweave with the second color. After setting up the base knot, we're going to take a second piece of cord and attach a lacing needle to it. We're going to use this second cord in order to make a pineapple knot interweave. So the first thing that we're going to do is pick up the standing end of this second cord and place it under the rubber band 
onto the left side of the standing hand of the first chord. With this we can now begin tying the pineapple knot. I'm going to take my lacing needle and I'm going to travel on the left side of the first standing hand, traveling under two, over one, under one, over one, under one, like this. I do not exit the knot, but stop at an under one. Now pull through the rest of your cord. The next sequence is going to be from right to left, and we're going to again start with an under one. By starting with an under one, our chord turns around towards the left side, and you can see that it travels under two here at the top. Then we continue over one, under one, over one, under one. Again, we do not exit the knot on the left side. Now, from left to right, we're going to start the next sequence under one, like this. Again, you can see that the chord basically turns around, going under these two strands. Then we continue over under, over under. Again, we do not exit the knot. Then, the next sequence is going to be an under two. An under two is going to split this pair of parallel strands. So, under two, over one, under one, over one, under one. Then, from left to right, we're going to travel under two again, splitting another set of parallel strands. So, under two, over one, under one, over one, under one. Like this. Now from right to left, we're going to travel under two to split a pair of parallel strands, then over two to split another pair, then continue under one, over one, under one. Then, from left to right, again, we travel under two to split a pair, over two to split a pair, then under, over, under. Then, from right to left, we're going to start the next sequence, under two to split a pair, over two, under two, then over under. Then the next sequence from left to right, under two, over two, under two, over one, under one. Then from right to left, under two, over two, under two, 
over to under one. Now from left to right, under to, over to, under to, over to, under one. And we're now at the final sequence. We start under to, over to, under to, over to and under one. We have now tied the knot. Now we're going to turn around with our working hand and we're going to place it on top of the standing hand, traveling under two. Like this. And with this we have tied the pineapple knot. The next step is going to be to prepare it and then we're going to transfer it onto a core. After tying the pineapple knot, we need to prepare it so that we can transfer it onto a core. The main point is that we get all of the strands off to the sides of the knot so that after we tighten up the knot, we can easily trim them. So, there are many ways of doing this, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to start with the working end of the second cord, so the cord that I used for the interweave. With the working end, I'm going to travel alongside the standing end, going over two, then immediately under the knot, and out on the right side. Like this. Now we have a double section here, and to remove it, I'm going to pull out this standing end of the second cord, like this, and then simply run it under the knot and to the left side. Like this. And with this I have already completed one strand in my knot. Now let's do the other two strands in the base knot. We're again going to take the working end first. And we're again going to double up the standing end, going over two, then directly under the entire knot, and out on the right side. And with this we have completed the working end. Again we have doubled up the standing end, so we're going to pull it out, and we're going to run it under, here, and out on the left side. Like this. And with this we have prepared the ends so that we can easily trim them once we tighten up the knot. Now let's transfer this knot onto a core. To transfer my knot, I'm now going to simply slide it off of my mandrel and I'm going to tighten it around my wooden sphere. Again, this wooden ball is one inch in diameter. So I'm going to place the core inside 
then tighten up my knot. Now how do you tighten the pineapple knot? You start at the standing end of the first knot, so the base knot, and you basically pull out the slack running through the entire knot until you reach the working end. So once you have pulled the slack out of the working end, you switch to the other strand again starting at the standing end, pulling in the strand a little bit, and tighten up throughout the knot. So once you have done one tightening, you're going to need to do a second one or even a third one until you get a tight wrap around. Now it is very important that the sphere inside has the hole inside this outer pattern so that we're going to be able to run a cord through it. After tightening up the knot so that it looks nice, we're going to trim the ends as well as melt them. When trimming, I usually tension up the two strands, then trim as close to the knot as possible. When melting, make sure that you only slightly touch the two ends. You don't want to melt too much and damage the strands of the knot. After slightly melting the two ends, I'm going to take a lacing needle and I'm simply going to push them back under the knot. Like this. Then do the other side as well. Like this. And we can now move on to the final step, which is going to be to insert a cord through this hole in the center and then tie some sort of a stopper knot in order to hold our Christmas decorations. To form a loop, in order to be able to hang my Christmas decorations, I usually take a piece of paracord and I run it through the wooden bowl at the center. Then, in order to prevent my decorations from slipping off of the cord, I will place some sort of a stopper knot at the bottom. For me, I usually just use a lanyard knot. 
Now to do this, take a small piece of paracord, take one of your decorations, and finally take a piece of thread. I'm going to run my thread through the center of my decoration, so through it, so that I come out at the other side. Then I take my paracord, I feed it through like this, and then simply pull on my thread to get the paracord through the hole. If your paracord is too thick or the hole is too small, you can use gutted paracord or if you have enough room, use regular paracord. I prefer paracord with the inner strands still inside, but sometimes it's not an option. So after this done, we can finally move on and tie a lanyard knot here at the bottom. To place a lanyard knot here at the bottom, I'm now going to pick up the left strand and I'm going to use it to make a loop. So a simple loop. Now using the right strand, I'm going to fold it towards the top like this, then place it under the loop. Then with the right strand, I'm going to pass over this top left strand coming out of the wooden ball, so over, then under the left end, like this. Then I'm going to weave through these three strands. I'm going to go over, under, over. So over, under, and finally over. You can see that we have a diamond shape here at the center. I'm going to pull a bit of my ends into the knot, like this. Then, using this top right strand, I'm going to go past this left strand at the top, which is coming out of the wooden ball, so past it, then directly through the center, so through this diamond shape here at the center. Then using this bottom left strand, I'm going to go past this top right strand here, again coming out of the wooden ball, and through the center, again through the diamond shape at the center. Pull on both ends in order to tighten up the knot. Now you can see that we have a bit of slack in the knot, Plus we have this distance that we do not want between the decoration and the knot. We basically want them to be as close to each other as possible. To do this, we first pull on one of the strands, then run the slack through the entire knot. Like this. We pull the slack out out of one of the working hands. Then we pull in the second strand. And again we run the slack through the knot. Pull on the working hand to tighten up the knot. Now this knot is going to need a bit more tightening, but all in all, it is a proper lanyard knot. Push the decoration right next to it, and you're pretty much done. The last step is going to be to trim the two ends. You can do it right next to the knot, or you can trim the two ends a bit further away. 
The way that I finish up the two ends is to first trim them so that one is a bit longer than the other. Then I pull out a bit of the inner strands, trim those as well. Then straighten up in order to pull in the inner strands a bit. Then lightly melt the two ends. With that, your project is complete. So guys, with the process pretty much demonstrated, we came to the end of this video. I hope that you were able to make everything without too much of a hassle. It does take some patience and getting used to, but once you get it down, the process can be quite fast. As a final note guys, you can store these ornaments in egg cartons and they can wait around for the next Christmas as well. Guys, thank you very much for joining me and see you next time.